Rocky, stop that. He's making his bed. Good. Hello, my name is Anthony. I'm Amy. And this is Rocky. Welcome back to Break the Twitch, the YouTube channel about doing more of what matters through minimalism, habits, and creativity. Today we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of having a dog, specifically from a minimalist lifestyle perspective. So if you're thinking about getting a dog, hopefully this video will help. Break the Twitch. Growing up, I never had a family of dogs. I, on the other hand, had dogs growing up, so I knew a little bit more. And since I knew that our focus was more on location independence and kind of reducing the responsibility and time that we spend on things, we a dog was never really in the picture in the short term. We both really loved dogs though, and so when we started realizing that we wanted a more creative space that was more rooted, we found ourselves starting to casually look at adoption sites. And I think we applied for about four different dogs and, and all of them were hypoallergenic dogs because we have some allergies. There aren't very many hypoallergenic dogs for adoption. I think they're in high demand. We actually had kind of given up, I think, on adopting and we're gonna hold off on getting a dog completely. One night I Googled Minnesota Multipoo, which is Maltese Poodle, the type of dog that Amy's parents have. And uh, we found this guy. He came up uh, on a breeder's website after being returned by a family that bought him at two months old. I'm not even sure if we knew when we went there that we were gonna come back with him. We didn't, we weren't sure. As you know, when you go see a dog, chances are it's coming home with you. Luckily, he came with a lot of the stuff that the previous family had bought for him. That made it really easy for us because we came back at 10 p.m. that night with a dog, didn't have anything. We got him settled in pretty quickly and that was kind of the story of how we ended up with Rocky. But let's get into some of the pros and cons that we have seen in terms of if you're considering a dog and what exactly you might be able to expect from the lifestyle change. Let's start off with the pros. The first thing is Rocky brings so much more joy into our lives. It's so nice to come home and have him be so excited to see us. And the little things that he does like cuddle up next to us or want to play, these are all things that just bring a lot of happiness into our lives and he's so cute. I mean, we're so biased, but he's really cute. Another thing is that he's just a very reassuring presence to have around. When we first got him, I was working from home by myself. Amy was leaving and going to work at an office. And it was just nice not being alone at home all day. So having him around to cuddle with or play with and just have as a bit of a distraction from time to time was definitely really nice. Rocky keeps us on schedule. He gets us up and going each morning. He goes for his walk. Especially for working at home, just to have that regularity of going outside at least twice per day and just getting out and making sure to be in the present moment. Speaking of the present, dogs tend to be very just in the moment. When they're hungry, they eat. When they're tired, they just nap and hang out. They just do what they're feeling. They're not really worrying about something else, at least as far as I know. So it's just nice to have him as a reminder of what matters. Just hear the present moment and just being there. When we go on our walks, Rocky likes to literally stop and smell the flowers. He's a pokey puppy when it comes to walking. So uh, we've learned to take our time. Another pro, and this may be more specific to Rocky because he is a very small dog and doesn't eat very much, but we really don't need to do too much to have him in our lives. And Rocky gives us so much more in return. All right, maybe we should cover his ears for this one because we're gonna talk about some of the cons of owning a dog. When we first got him, there was a huge adjustment period. I was alone at home with him during the day. I did not know what it would take to take care of a puppy. For the first couple months, I had a really hard time getting any work done. He constantly wanted to play, was chewing on my, my pant leg, and he was just a huge distraction. And obviously a very cute one, but him getting used to the house, me getting used to him, and trying to figure out the schedule of the potty when, schedule. He, yeah, when he needed to go out, I actually made an Excel spreadsheet because I was so overwhelmed with remembering when he would, had gone out and when he had eaten and what he needed and trying to get him on track. And Rocky was trying to figure it out too. He didn't know where was it appropriate to go pee and poo. <laughs> yeah. So we needed to show him the proper place to go and get him used to that. So there's definitely an adjustment period and know that it's always going to be more difficult in the first couple months 
So plan for that. Even if it's an older dog or a new puppy, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be an adjustment period where the dog is getting used to you and the family and you're getting used to the dog and you're sort of just adjusting to each other's schedules. There's also a little less flexibility day to day. Before we got Rocky, we didn't have to worry about how long has it been since we've been home? Do we need to let Rocky out and feed him? There were some moments where we were at an event or a friend's house and we returned a little earlier than we would have liked because we needed to take care of Rocky. Another thing around flexibility is travel. Before we got Rocky, we were traveling quite a bit, almost once a month on average for the two years before we got him. And that came to a bit of a screeching halt as soon as we got Rocky. He is easy to travel with and we can take him, but it's almost like buying a third ticket every time we take him somewhere. And then we have to find dog friendly hotels, Airbnbs as well, which are hard to find and often more expensive. And if we don't bring him, we have to find a dog care sitting service or a trusted person to take care of him. There's also no one really takes care of your dog the way that you do. Our dog gets his teeth brushed and face washed every day. And I mean, I just feel weird asking someone to do that. To brush our dog's teeth. Yeah. Yeah. And also we just don't want to leave him. That's the other thing. That's almost the biggest thing, is that we just would love to go somewhere, but leaving him behind just doesn't feel good. You just don't want to leave him hanging. So maybe that's just us, but eh, we view it as a con. The last thing is it can get a little expensive if there are vet bills or health issues involved. There was, a, there was one visit where Rocky had started getting a cavity, but one of his baby teeth hadn't fallen out yet and it was right against one of his adult teeth. And so we thought we had to go get the teeth extracted. Yeah, which would have been expensive. <laughs> so we do realize that he's not super expensive right now. He's about two years old, but there is the potential that the cost can add up and we're gonna want to get whatever medical care he needs probably. I can't imagine not. So uh, being ready for that is definitely something you need to think about. So those are just some things that you can consider if you're thinking about getting a dog in terms of the flexibility you might want or simply having a companion to hang out with you at home. Obviously we would not trade this little guy for the world at this point and we're really happy to have him, but as you go through your decision process, hopefully this will help. Oh, did you just... Okay, it's right here. <laughs> no, stop. Okay, 